It's immediately after the close of our last episode. As you know, there's been a sensational development in the trial of State versus May Grant for the murder of Marcel Blanc. As you know, two key state witnesses have disappeared. On hearing the news, Prosecutor Apt rushed over to the defense table, accused Perry Mason of being responsible for their disappearance, and... Well, Mason? Well, do you have anything to say? I say lower your voice, Mr. Apt. Judge Selby... He's going to hear me, Mason, as will everyone in this courtroom. As will the Bar Association. Mr. Apt, Mr. Mason? Uh, just a moment, Your Honor. Just one short moment, if you please. All right now, Mason. I'll give you one chance to tell me what you did with him. I hate to spoil your fun, Apt, but I'm as surprised as you are. In fact... Mason, are you going to deny that you knew... Of course I knew about them. As a matter of fact, I knew more about both of those witnesses than you did. I wanted them to testify. What? They're crooks, Mr. Apt. Show the prosecutor that insurance report, Mr. Street. Yes, Mason. What? What did you say? Crooks? Insurance report. Your witnesses are crooks. They're wanted for bringing false suit against a Minnesota doctor... I'll show it to him, Here you are, Mr. Rapp. Go on, go on, take it. Yeah. Mm. Names are different. I think you will notice the resemblance in the photographs. And the fingerprints, Mr. Rapp. Don't forget the fingerprints. The names don't matter. A rose by any other name, you know. Well, I must say, Mason, I... Well, I must say. Looks as if I owe you a debt of thanks. Yes, it looks as though I do. Well, you can skip the debt. But if I were you, I'd go tell Judge Selby and then get on with this. Of course I will. Of course I will. Yes, indeed, I do owe you a debt of thanks. Well, if I had put them on the stand, I'd... Well, as it is, no harm's been done. Except that Mr. Carlo doesn't have an alibi. Hmm. Whatever makes you say that, Miss Street? Why ever wouldn't I say it? She's got no alibi. Her witnesses are gone. Therefore, as you stipulated, Mr. Apt, she is the prime suspect. Oh, but you're wrong, Mr. Mason. Very wrong. How? Mr. Carlo has an alibi. You don't think she had only one string to her bow? What? Oh, my, didn't you know about him? You mean you didn't know about Mr. Cadrades? Another witness? That's right, Miss Street, another witness. An irreputable witness. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll go explain to Judge Selby. How? Well, first, of course, about the two witnesses who disappeared. Yes, I think I'll uh, have him issue a bench warrant for them. Then I should explain that it's simply impossible for Mr. Cadrades to appear before this afternoon. So we'd best adjourn for lunch. Uh, what did you ask, Mr. Mason? I asked how. How can you explain away a lying witness? You mean Mr. Cadrades? Mr. Apt. If Cadrades alibis Kitty DeCarlo, he'll have to lie. So you think, Mr. Mason. I know it, as well as I know my own name. Well then, Mason, I'm certainly happy you aren't on the jury. No, oh, very happy. Now, if you'll excuse me, please... Oh, and, uh, uh, Mr. Mason, thanks again. I mean it. <laughs> Meanwhile, in an old apartment building, many blocks away, the witness, Valeria Gedrady, slowly climbs the stairs to the fifth floor. Mama! I heard you on the stairs, Papa, so I opened the door for you. What were you doing near the door? Something happened. Our daughter? Sleeping. That is sleeping now. The doctor... The doctor? I had to get him. Oh, Papa, you should have seen her. I was so frightened. But the doctor gave her an injection. Oh. What happened? She tried to walk again this morning. Oh. I didn't know until I heard her fall. Is she? When she fell... Did she hurt herself? No. The doctor does not think she harmed herself. But the pain, what, what the about... The old injury. He said something else. Yes? Papa, she has to have... She has to have... She has to have the operation, not just for the pain. Not just so she can walk. Huh? He used words I would not understand, not even in our native tongue. Shh. No one hears now, Robert Smith. Still, you must not mention... Tell me about the doctor. She must have the operation soon, Papa. But there may not be time. She will have her operation. What? She will be well. Our girl is going to have the same chance as other girls. But the money, Papa. We will have the money. And our daughter will have her operation. Soon, Papa. Within the month. How? You must ask me no questions. But, Papa. No question, no. Papa. 
If I speak harshly, if I seem not to be myself... I will try to understand as I have understood before. After all, I am your wife. The wife of Gidratis, if that is a name we must... Don't use. say that. Gidratis or any other name. Papa, Papa, can't you understand? This is the United States. We can talk as we wish. We can say what we wish. No one hears us in our own apartment. Oh. And don't you forget that. So, so now you are hungry. You sit down and I will make lunch and we will talk. No. No, there is nothing to say. Only that she will have the operation. And that you must never mention... Never say a word about it until Talk I... to talk is nothing if she is going to be well. That is all I care for. I, too. Now I must prepare to go. And you must eat first. No, no, I'm not hungry. Papa, to bear witness will be hard. I can't eat. Then coffee. I will heat your coffee. Please, please. And you will drink coffee, Gadrete, so you will not go to court. You will not be witness at any trial. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. You have to go to court. I'm happy with what you've just told me. So happy. It is a big thing to be told all at once. Yes. A big thing. Papa, you're not happy. No questions. All right, no questions. Sit down here, no questions, could you? It is not a joke, Mom. Oh, it is not a joke. My man brings the most wonderful news I've heard since we entered this country. And I must not be gay. It is to laugh and joke and sing. No questions, Mama, please. All right. No questions. But why, Papa? The news you brought is what we've longed and dreamed for. And yet you're sad. I can't explain that sadness. After the trial, perhaps. Oh, yes, the trial, Papa, I understand. Oh, you're... Clumsy wife. Of course you are sad. It is what you have to do that bears so heavy on you. It is all right. Uh, I wish you did not have to bear the witness. I must. To speak the truth is sometimes hard. It's a sad burden to carry. Mama, please. By the papers, what you say will prove the guilt of Mrs. Grant. Mama, I do not carry the burden alone. There are others who No. Huh? You do not know. No? It is best that you should. I'll pour your coffee then. No, what, Mom? Wait. Mrs. Kaczynski told me a few minutes ago. Drink your coffee. Mrs. Kaczynski? What about it? Eat, Papa. And uh, here's sugar for your coffee. Mrs. Kaczynski heard it on her wireless. The others have gone away. Who? Eat, Kadretis. The other witnesses who saw Mr. Carlo, they cannot be found. So it is all on you, Papa. Poor man. And poor lady. What? Poor Mrs. Grant, she will have to die. Stop. I will say poor lady. Even if she is guilty, she is a poor lady. So sad and so sweet looking in her picture. It is not for us to question. To question, no. To pity, yes. And the little girl. We have a little girl. What? What? We have a little girl. Pity her. Larry. I have pity and thoughts for my little girl alone. I cannot eat. I must go. And do not speak of the other again. As you wish. Do not speak. Never speak. Do not say those names again. His wife can guess. Because not only the operation, but the very lives of his beloved wife and daughter depend on Gedrady's following Anna B. Hurley's orders. Yes, Valeria Gedrades knows well that in order to preserve his own family, he'll have to doom May Grant. Join us tomorrow, won't you? <laughs>